Good morning, everyone. How are you guys doing today? Doing good? Could you guys uh, join me in thanking Cam and our worship team? We could them. And uh, would you guys also, we have another team called the Tech Team, and they're hidden, uh, but they have done so much these last couple of weeks, um, turning this space into a construction zone during the week, and then a worship space on the weekend, and changing it around every weekend and all that good stuff. So uh, they're hiding back there in that back hallway and back here in this hallway, and can you guys thank them so much? We appreciate them. Well, uh, my name is Josh, and it's great to have you guys with us today. And uh, we're excited. Today is a great day. We're celebrating the last Sunday in this space, the first Sunday in our new space. And if you're joining us for the first time, we're so glad that you guys are here. We're excited about what God's doing. Um, I want to thank uh, somebody else before we get into the message today. Um, I want to thank um, someone who leads our guest services ministry. And so, Steve, I'm going to have you come up here. Yeah, come on up. <laughs> so this is Steve Munger, and the Munger family has been a part of our church family for many years. And Steve has been leading in our, what's called our guest services ministry, basically our greeters and our coffee team and those who help make, make you feel welcome at church. And uh, what I appreciate about Steve is his heart for people. Uh, he's so good at remembering names and connecting with people. And you, when you look at a room, you see people. And I appreciate that about you. And uh, I think that's very uh, Christ-honoring. So Steve has been serving in the guest, ministry, uh, service, guest services ministry role for probably three to four years, somewhere in there. It started out as maybe six months, <laughs> and then it turned into three and a half years. Uh, but I'm just so thankful for that. And Steve, is actually, he actually wears many hats. He helps with our student ministry uh, he also, for the past six months or so, has been helping with our facility. And so uh, Jill, his wife, is thankful to have, will be thankful to have at least another portion of you back um, <laughs> after, after this. But Steve is transitioning out of that leadership role. Uh, Karen Reed is actually taking over, so we can give Karen a hand. Appreciate Karen. <laughs> so Steve, we just wanted to say thank you and just acknowledge your, your hard work for the Lord and all that you've done uh, for this church family. So we appreciate you very much. And uh, where's GJ? Are you coming up? Okay. Uh, there it is. I was like, I don't have it. I got it. I get, you want it? Hey. We'll give it, it to him together. <laughs> no. uh, if you don't know Steve, you know Steve. Like, uh, can we just write? Uh, and then I don't have a microphone. This is fine. Yeah, uh, Jesus, thank you so much for Steve, for how you've blessed him, how you've given him such a huge heart uh, to serve you and to serve others, God. And we're so grateful that he's part of this family. Um, in this transition, God, I pray that you continue to bless him, bless Jill, bless his family, uh, and just continue to do uh, your wonders in and through Steve and his family, God. Uh, again, we're grateful for who you are. Um, and again, it's in your powerful name we pray. Amen. 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 Okay, I want to give uh, kind of one more update. Um, it's, uh, we have the, the honor and privilege to be connected to a ministry called Kingdom Kids Homes. And Kingdom Kids Homes uh, runs an orphanage in Haiti. And we've also been able to partner with them these last few months in a new project they've been working on called House of Hope. They built a community center in, in Haiti. Um, actually, we're sending a team of 20 missionaries from our church um, between Christmas and New Year's this year. And so we're very excited about that. And so just, a few, just about a month ago, Christy, the director, was able to go to Haiti and to uh, celebrate their grand opening of House of Hope. And they have a video for us to watch. So go ahead and just watch this. Hey, everyone. This is Shu here, and I'm here with Robinson in Haiti. We're on the site of House of Hope. We're so excited to launch House of Hope, House of Hope. So excited for all the progress we've been able to make on House of Hope. And I am in Haiti, standing on the property of House of Hope. So basically, the um, entire project for House of Hope costs an estimated $471,263. Where did we get House of Hope started? 
and you can donate to help us get those things. You know, our main goal through this project is to give hope to people who are absolutely hopeless and to show them the love of God in practical ways. And it is one of the poorest, most devastated regions in all of Haiti. And they need our help. They need God's love. Please keep this project in your prayers. We're so excited for all the ways you know God is going to continue. So cool. It's awesome. So uh, if you don't know what's going on today, uh, today, like we've said, is the last Sunday in this room, and we're very thankful for that. Uh, behind me, uh, we've been working on the past, we, uh, I haven't been doing anything, but other people have been working hard the last several months to uh, do our addition behind us, which is going to be our new worship space. And so we're going to take today just to 
take some time to celebrate and remember all that God has done for us. And so it's appropriate uh, at, at many moments, but especially moments like these, it's very appropriate for us to pause and reflect and to give God praise. And so we want to do that today. We're going to be celebrating communion together at the end of the service, and uh, we're excited and thankful for that. So if you guys have your Bibles, I want to ask you to open those and turn to Psalm 136. And I just want to highlight a few things there. Psalm 136. So the Psalms are a collection of poems and songs. And this one in particular, this actually happens in a couple different places, but this one in particular has a, a rhythm and a pattern to it. If you have your Bibles open to Psalm 136, you can see that. Uh, it gives a verse, and then it, ha- it repeats a phrase. What's the phrase that it repeats? Yeah, his love endures for lo- forever. His steadfast love endures forever. So 26 times there's a refrain, and then there's this follow-up verse as a reminder of God's faithfulness. It says, give thanks to the Lord for he is good And then usually in a congregational setting, everyone would say what? His love endures forever. Depending on what translation you have, Cam, it might be a little bit different. Yeah. (laughs) His love endures forever. Just a a reminder after reminder of all that God has done and a reminder of his faithfulness to his people. So we want want that to be what this morning is like. Um, God, as as an important note, God wants us to build this regularly into our schedules is to pause and reflect on all that he's done. Um, if we don't, we're in danger of missing out and remembering all that God has done. Uh, if, you, if you know much about the Old Testament and the calendar that God gives to his people, God gives a, a calendar of regular celebration. Just so you all know, God is a God of celebration. That seven different festivals within the, the 12-month calendar year for the people of God are involving celebrating. And they're not just like a, like a day of celebration. It's a week of celebration. So seven different festivals throughout the entire year, God says to his people, I want you to stop, I want you to reflect, and I want you to, to worship me for all that I've done for you. Isn't that cool? Um, so I, th- this year is unique for, my, for our family. We have three daughters. And uh, this year we have a freshman in high school. Lord, pray for me, right? Um, but the truth is, I absolutely love watching Ava Ray at this stage of her life. It's a joy. It's an honor. It's a privilege. And what I know is I'm going to blink, and guess what? She's going to be out of the house, right? And so if we don't stop and enjoy these moments, we will miss them. And so it is right, it is good for us to pause and reflect and acknowledge the goodness of God in our lives. 1 Samuel 12, 24 says, Be sure to fear the Lord and serve him faithfully with all of your heart. And then it says, Consider what great things he has done for you. So I just want to encourage you throughout this morning today, I just want to encourage you to take some time and reflect personally. Um, what has God done for you? What has God done in your life You know, it's interesting as we read scripture and as you look page to page or cover to cover in the Bible, there's so many times when God has his people rehearse what he's done. They remind themselves that he is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. That's generations of God's blessing. He reminds them about the time that Moses led them out of captivity, and he reminds them about the Red Sea, and he reminds them about the provision of manna in the wilderness Why would God have them rehearse these things except that it's an important thing for us to have that foundation and reminder of what God has done for us? So from time to time for us, it's good for us to rehearse what God has done. So today is going to be a little bit of just a walk down memory lane for our church. And uh, we get to see and be reminded of all that God has done. And hopefully it's a reminder to you of what God has done in your life as well. So this, this verse, Psalm 136, verse 1, uh, it says, Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. 
And we're going to say this a few times um, throughout the day today. So I want us to remember all that God has done for us. So uh, just bear with me. Just indulge me for a second. Um, If you're relatively new to the church, we'll get to the season that includes you. If this is your first time, uh, you're being included today. (laughs) But we have believed ever since the beginning that God has a unique plan and purpose for this local expression of the body of Christ. That every, every, uh, every church that is a true church that follows Jesus Christ is a part of the whole body of Christ but that God has a unique plan for each individual local expression that he wants to fulfill through us. And we believe that about Evident Church. And so in 2008 is when Evident Church began. We were looking for a place to gather together, and we weren't finding a place to gather, but we eventually found a school. Anybody remember the name of that school? It starts with an S. You guys are are there. You're on it. It's called Seneca Middle School. You guys know where Seneca Middle School is in Macomb Township at... 21 Mile in Heidenreich. So that was our first place to gather as a church family in 2008 was Seneca Middle School. We have a couple of pictures. Oh, wow. (laughs) I looked different back then. (laughs) But we set up and tore down every single Sunday, and we met in people's homes, and God did some really amazing things. We saw people come to faith in Christ in that season of our church. We saw people baptized in that season of our church. We saw relationships restored, and we did outreach to the community, and it was an amazing time. I want to ask you, so that was from 2008 to 2011. Um, I think most of you were born, after I look around the room, not all, not all the little ones around here, but how many of you came to Evident during those years at Seneca Middle School? Would you guys raise your hand if you came to Evident during those years? Yeah, these guys right here. There's more in the next service. There's more floating around the back. So, uh, so in 2008 to 2011, God provided. Can we say this verse together? Psalm 136, verse 1. Can we say this verse together? Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. And in 2011, uh, as we were paying about $1,100 a Sunday to be in that school, we realized this wasn't going to work long term. And so we were seeking God's next step for us as a church. And in those seasons, it just seems like, like it's going to be forever until the next thing that God opens up. You guys ever been there before? It just seems like you're, you're just, you, God needs to do something in your life, and, and it's just not happening. And then eventually it happens. So our next stage as a church was in a, a little elementary school called Green Elementary School in Chesterfield, Michigan, at 21 Mile and, uh, and Sugarbush just a few miles down the road. And so uh, Principal uh, Hilsher was great to open up the building to us and welcome us in as a church and let us be there. For the next seven years, we met at Seneca Middle School. Um, we have a couple of pictures of us. We, in this space, um, we worship God together in an elementary school cafeteria <laughs> that oftentimes still smelled like an elementary school cafeteria <laughs> on Sunday mornings. We're like, hey, could you guys please close the kitchen? Uh, The smell is very strong today. You guys had hash browns, didn't you? Okay. (laughs) And so, but we we had such a great time. God did so many great things in this time in history in the life of our church. Um, I'm curious, how many of you came to Evident Church during this season of our church family? Go ahead and raise your hand. Yeah, so many of you uh, started attending and being a part of this church family uh, in that season. And we saw... Many, many people come to faith in Christ. We baptized, saw many people take the step of baptism. We dedicated children in this space. We had vacation Bible schools in this space. We did uh, kids' Christmas plays. How many of you remember the Easter kabuki drop that we did for Easter when you had this big white sheet and then it dropped out in, in dramatic fashion like only Pastor Tony uh, could do? We've grown and learned so much in that season, and many of you came um, to our church family in that season. Can we just say this verse again together? Psalm 136, verse 1. It says, Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. We knew that being portable wasn't a good long-term solution, at least not for for our our sanity. And so we were praying and, and asking God for our own space, and it seemed like forever until we got to that point. Um, many of you were on our setup and teardown team starting super early Sunday mornings and uh, sacrificed many long hours for our church. 
and we're so thankful for that. We prayed, and we prayed, and we prayed, and we looked at different land and different buildings, and we prayed, and we prayed until June of 2017 when God opened up this space. Um, let me tell you the story real quickly. Um, it was a Saturday morning in early June of 2017, and uh, I wasn't awake yet, but somebody from the church, um, Kathy Elliott, she sent me a text message. She had been up in the middle of the night uh, browsing house listings on an app on her phone, and she just couldn't sleep, so she was just browsing through home listings. And she came across a listing for the Chesterfield Lions Club. It shouldn't have been in a residential listing, but it got listed incorrectly. There wasn't even a for sale sign in the front yet. And she texted me. She said she waited until 7 o'clock to text me. <laughs> she texted me at 7 o'clock, and by 3 o'clock that day, we had our leadership team and our realtor here with us walking around this space um, to see about this space as the next, the next home for our church. Uh, the, that Sunday, June 4th of 2017, after church, we had kind of an emergency, like, hey, church meeting right, right now. Like, hey, just so you know, like, we found this space, and we're, we're uh, feeling led to take a step on that. So as a leadership team, we voted to, to make an offer on this place. By Monday, they had accepted the offer. By Tuesday, we had a commercial appraisal done. By Wednesday, we had a signed purchase agreement on this space right here at 52101 Gratiot Avenue. Yeah, we can, I think we could clap for that. I would be okay with that. That'd be good. Uh, and that's, that's oftentimes how it happens is just like years and years and years of work and toil and planting, and then all of a sudden harvest, right? All of a sudden God does something. Hopefully that can be an encouragement to you. So this space, uh, I think we have some pictures. Uh, she may, already, may have already flipped through, so... This, so this pause right here, just go back to that one with the floor, the, the amazing dance floor for a second. <laughs> so you would never know looking at this building, but this used to be the, the Chesterfield Lions Club. Some of you know that because you've lived in this community. Uh, but this is the dance floor that, in our kids' wing back here, there used to be a dance floor that looked this amazing. <laughs> and uh, these glass blocks, they actually had these, uh, these colored lights, ropes in the middle of those that would turn different colors. And uh, it was just amazing. Many people have come to the church and said, we had a, a birthday party here. We had a wedding reception here. We had whatever it was. And uh, so we've prayed God's blessing over this space that all the activities that have taken place here, <laughs> God would, would uh, anyway. But this space right here, do you guys know where this space is in the building? This is this space right here. This was their clubhouse. This was their little small meeting room. And this is this space right here. And then go ahead and go to that one from that shop from the parking lot. That blows my mind to see this from the parking lot. <laughs> this is this building right here. And so much has, has changed and been done. And just it's so good to be reminded of all that God has done. It's so good to be reminded about where God has taken us and the journey that God has had us on. And we're so thankful and so, so excited. Do we have a picture of me and the lion? Has that one already popped up yet? Oh, we got me and the keys. <laughs> that was the day we signed... We signed and uh, we bought the building, got the keys. It's like, yes, we have our own building now. Uh, so cool. Such a great moment. <laughs> That's a scary looking face. Do we have another picture of me and the lion? No. Oh, maybe I didn't put that one in there, but there used to be a, a huge gold lion out in front of the building. How do you remember the gold lion out in front of the building? Quite a few of you do. Um, so one of the very first, even before we bought the building, I snuck out. It was kind of like dusk. I snuck out and took a selfie with the lion out in front <laughs> of the building. And uh, well, then one, lion, the, one day the lion disappeared. Do you guys know where the lion is now? It's not? No. <laughs> no, that would be great. We had so many people say, you should get a lamb next to it, and the lion could lay down with the lamb. And all, but it's, but um, anyway, it's actually at the, uh, the, what is it, Macomb Township uh, Lions Club on North Avenue. So if you drive by North Avenue, you see a big old lion in front of it. That came from right in front of the building. We showed up one day, and it was gone. <laughs> no, actually, we called it local Lions Club and said, hey, uh, first come, first serve if anybody wants it. Um, you can have it, and then one day we showed up, and it was gone. So, and then we saw it over there one day. <laughs> but God has done so much. Can we, um, now let me just remind us of all that God has done here. We've been here for three years, in this space for three years. Um, we had Christmas Eve services, lots of them. Our first Christmas Eve here, we had four services in this space. Um, on Easter that year, we had four services. Christmas the next year, Christmas 2019, we had seven Christmas Eve services. We had over 500 people 
that came to attend Christmas Eve. It's, not, it's just amazing what God has done through this little tiny space, through this little tiny church uh, in this community. It just, it's humbling. It's amazing. I'm grateful. We, we had uh, animals. Uh, in, we had a barn back here. You guys remember the barn? We had a big pole barn behind us, and we had, Chris, we had animals for Christmas. We had a block party. We've had nights of worship, and so many lives have been changed um, in this space, and we're so grateful. Um, how many of you have come to Evident Church since in this season from 2018 um, since we've been in this space? How many of you come during that season? Go ahead, raise your hands. Yeah, that's so cool. That's so cool. Um, um, that's Psalm 136, verse 1 together. Let's read that. It says, Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. And then in March of 2020, uh, something happened that changed a lot of people's lives. Uh, you might call it a pandemic. I don't know. <laughs> so what's amazing to me is half the time that we've been in this space has been during the, the coronavirus pandemic. Isn't that crazy? Three years, first year and a half without, and then from March 2020 until now, about a year and a half um, in that season. And God has just continued to be faithful. In fact, I would probably argue that maybe more ministry has happened in this last year and a half than in the first year and a half uh, in this space. And God just continues to show us how faithful he is and how good he is. You know, and in a season where we needed more space, it would have been nice to have more space to, to spread out a little bit. God showed us that we can be flexible as a church, that we can be grace-filled as a church, and that God will supply all of our needs. And so in a time when we weren't able to meet together physically, we went online for a while, we came in with different adjustments and arrangements, um, our, your generosity, our giving as a church actually increased to the point where we were, we were able to go to our denomination and say, hey, we've got a need for expanding. We've been, you know, had, we had seven Christmas Eve services, people. Uh, and, and in that season, we were able to break ground and move forward with what God has provided in this next season of our church family. Isn't that cool? It's exciting. Um, I'm curious uh, to kind of break down this last season. How many of you have come to Evident uh, since the pandemic in the last year and a half? How many of you have come to Evident during that season? Yeah, it's okay. So some of you raise your hand for the other one. That's okay. I, I didn't really uh, distinguish that very well. But. So that's, that's just encouraging. It's so cool to see what God is doing. So let's read that verse again, Psalm 136, verse 1. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. It is so good to be reminded of God's faithfulness. And I want you to be doing the same thing in your life right now. If you had to look back, uh, so one of the things you can know is that life happens in seasons. I'm thankful that life happens in seasons. I'm thankful that books have chapters, right? You can close a chapter, and you can start a new chapter. Um, if a book was one solid paragraph or one solid chapter, it'd be difficult to get through. So, li so oftentimes, life happens in seasons. And so I'm thankful that all God has done. I want to encourage you to look back over your life as well. So we've learned some lessons. I want to share with you a couple of the lessons that we've learned over these past couple of years. Um, we've learned that God can do a lot with a little. Uh, we wanted to first get our kids situated, so all of our kids' rooms are all set. We figured the adults could put up with this for a little while. But God has done so much with, with what he's given to us. We, we learned what really unites us, and that is our faith in Jesus Christ. That it's not about politics or masks or no masks or those types of things, but Jesus is the one who ultimately unites us. I'm so grateful. I just want to say this. I'm so grateful to our church family for the way that you guys have weathered the storm of this past season. It wasn't perfect. We've had some people leave our church. We've had some people come to our church. And, but you guys have been so gracious in this season. I'm so thankful for that as a pastor. So I appreciate that. Um, this last one's kind of fun, but we've learned that although it's not an evident party until the police show up, uh, that's some of our, our evident history that we've had a history of the police coming, not because we've done, well, I'm not sure why they've come. Anyway, <laughs> we just have had police come. We have a great relationship. Uh, we appreciate, I'm trying to think how to get up. Anyway, so let me finish this, this statement. Um, we've learned that although it's not an evident party until the police show up, we should never take Pastor Josh with us when we're doing something dangerous or illegal. Um, so on this, this last couple months, it's been fun to be here working, and um, so uh, Cam Walters, our creative arts director, and G.J. Tesser, our, 
adult ministry pastor. Um, we get to spend a lot of time together during the week. And so basically the, the contractors would come and they would work about, from about 7 to 3 every single day here on the project. And so uh, about 3 o'clock, uh, we would just kind of peek out the door and make sure all their cars were gone. And then we'd wander back in the new space and just kind of check out the work that had been done for the day. And so we found ourselves one day uh, out there in the space. Just go ahead and put up that picture for a second. And uh, this was the space just a few months ago. And they had these, these little lifts uh, called genies or whatever they're called uh, that they would use, and they would leave them there. And so we just got curious, like, I wonder if they left the keys. <laughs> and so this was, this was one of our first experiences with the lift. Go ahead and just, watch, just show this quick video. <laughs> Do we have any audio? So, so while they're on the lift, what am I doing, right? I'm re- I'm, I've got my, video, my phone not recording the whole thing, right? <laughs> in case anybody gets hurt or, or maybe I could show in a service someday. You never know. You never know. So, uh, so thankfully, though, Pastor GJ and uh, Cam, they got a lot better on the genies, and uh, no one got hurt. No one got hurt. There was one day when, I, when uh, GJ was trying to go up. There's like a little attic access space, and he's trying to go up to see what was in there. And I thought he was going to squash himself on the ceiling. <laughs> it was going up and up, and I don't think he could get it turned off. But anyway, so God has taught us a lot. Um, we will have a lot to be grateful for. Uh, Psalm 66, verses 4 and 5, it's a reminder to us of the part that we get to play in the worship of God. It says, all the earth bows down to you. We serve a God that the whole earth, that he is worthy of the whole earth bowing down to and worshiping him. They sing praise to you. They sing praises to your name. It says, come and see what our God has done, what awesome miracles he performs for his people. I just want to ask you, what has God done for you? What do you need to rehearse over in your life and just say, God, thank you for your goodness and your grace toward us. And as a church family, we have so much to be thankful for. God has done so many amazing things, and it's been so cool to be a part of it with you. And I'm excited about what's next. Uh, We'll talk more about that next Sunday. Um, So I guess I forgot to say this earlier, but so next Sunday, you'll be able to walk through these doors into our lobby and walk through these doors Uh, into our new worship space. I do want to set expectations. The space will not be done next Sunday, but it's done enough. Um, The city has given us the green light to begin using that space. It'll take us some time to get that space. I don't think we'll have a stage for a while. Uh, Some of our stuff is still on a shipping container outside of LA. Uh, So anyway, but just to set expectations, but we'll come together and we'll worship the same God uh, with the same spirit and uh, celebrate what Jesus has done for us together beginning next Sunday. Um, there's a, there's a uh, time in the Gospels where Jesus uh, heals 10 lepers. They had a disease, they had a sickness, and he heals all 10 of them. And that's a life-changing transformation. He says, I want you to go to the priest, and I want you to show yourself so you can be de- declared clean. And as they were going, they were healed. But Jesus recounts the fact that only one of the 10 returned to thank Jesus. And his point was, or his question was, where are the other nine? Why didn't the other nine stop and pause and thank me uh, for what I've done for them? So there's a real danger in our lives if we don't consistently, regularly pause and show God our thanks and appreciation. So what has God done for you? What praises do you need to bring him today? So we're going to receive communion together. I can't think of any better way to commemorate this time that we've been together together than to have communion. And our, our ushers are going to help pass that out for us. Let me just give some quick um, instructions and guidance. If this is your first time or you're new to us or you haven't done this with us before, uh, communion is a very sacred and solemn thing that we get to do together. It's a time when we remember uh, the body and the blood of Christ, our Savior. And uh, Scripture is very clear that if you are not a follower of Jesus, if you haven't placed your trust in him, 
um, that you shouldn't receive communion. That'd be better for you not to. Um, but I believe that there's no better time than right now for you to put your faith and trust in Christ. Um, Ephesians 2, verses 3 through 5, reminds us, it says, We were by nature deserving of God's wrath, but because of his great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ, even when we were dead in transgressions. It is by grace that you have been saved. And I, it's just so good to be reminded that before Christ, we were dead in our sins, Scripture says. We were without hope. I think we just forget. I, I know I forget. I forget what God's done for me, and it's, it's a shame. Like, it's, it's embarrassing. I take for granted the grace of God. I take for granted the love of God. I take for granted the salvation that we have through Jesus Christ. But we're reminded that before Christ, we were dead in our sins, dead in our sins. And our eternal destiny was separation from God forever. But because of God's great love, because of Jesus' sacrifice, we are made right with him. So it's just good to be reminded of all that God has done. And so as we receive communion, um, we believe in what's called open communion. You don't have to be a member of our church. You just have to be a member of the family of God through your profession of faith in Jesus. You're welcome to receive this with us. Um, we believe that uh, this represents Christ's body. It represents Christ's blood. And we're to do this until he returns. So let me read to you. Actually, ushers, if you guys could pass that out and just hold on to the elements. There's a spot in the center of the tray. Those loose ones are gluten-free. Um, if that's helpful to you, you can, can utilize that. Go ahead and just pass those out and take a moment to reflect, and we'll read scripture together and receive that together. Yeah, if you guys would like to, you can peel open that top layer. There's a top layer that has a wafer in it, and then we'll get to the bottom layer in a second. Steve or Karen, if you guys, if you guys could bring one up for me, I'd appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. So what I like to do is I like to just take the first element, the wafer, and I like to just hold it in my hand. I like to just think about and consider what Christ has done for me. It may not be pleasant, but what I like to do is I, I like to think and picture, imagine Christ on the cross. Uh, what he went through, scripture is very clear that he suffered on our behalf, that by his stripes and by his wounds we are healed. So just pause for a minute and just remember, just reflect. Allow yourself to think about what Christ has done for you that you were dead in your sins and transgressions. But because of Jesus and Jesus Christ alone, you are made whole and you are set free. And you are forgiven of your sins. In 1 Corinthians 11, 23, we get some instructions about communion. Uh, Paul says, For what I received from the Lord, I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. You may receive that together. You guys can uh, go ahead and peel back the second layer. And again, I would encourage you just to hold on to that for a moment. 
and just reflect again on all that God has done for you. It is the blood of Jesus that washes over you, that cleanses you. And scripture says that because of what Christ has done, we are made whiter than snow. That we are cleansed, we are made whole, we are forgiven. We are given Jesus' righteousness in place of our sin. Again, Paul went on to say, he said, In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. And it's, just, it's a reminder to us of the transition from the Old Testament, where God demanded a sacrifice for forgiveness of sin. And now Jesus is that perfect sacrifice for us. That we don't need to keep earning our salvation or keep sacrificing things in the same way they did, but Jesus' blood now covers us, and you may receive that together. Would you guys join me as we pray? God, we are just so grateful for all you've done. As we look back over just a couple of these examples, God, there are a million more. There are a million more of moments and days and seasons, God, where you were faithful, where you were good, and you displayed your character and your splendor and your glory. God, we give you the praise. We give you all the praise for all that you've done. It is by your goodness and your grace alone. God, thank you for including us. Thank you for guiding and directing us. Thank you for using us. Thank you for doing miraculous things. God, we're excited for what you're going to do next. We give you praise today in Jesus' name. Amen.